Hey guys, today I'm going over every secret that I think everyone should know about the original Super Mario Bros. trilogy on the NES. There are so many secrets in these games, some intentionally put there by Nintendo, and some being glitches found by fans over the years. In this video, I've gathered what I consider to be the ultimate guide for every secret in the Super Mario series on NES. No matter your skill level, you'll most likely learn a new trick from this video. Let's start out with the original Super Mario Brothers. A little trick that not a lot of people know is that it is possible to wall jump in this game. It's not an official move, it's a glitch, and you most likely won't be able to do it reliably. But to do it, you need to jump into a wall while running at full speed. There is a brief moment where Mario will clip into the wall, and if you hit the jump button right when this happens, you can actually wall jump. Did you know that you don't actually have to jump on the enemy's heads to take them out? This only applies to the first Mario game, but here you only need to be moving downwards or falling to hit an enemy. You don't actually have to jump on their heads to take them out. If you lose all your lives and get that dreaded game over, when you're back at the title screen, you can hold down the A button on the controller and press the start button. This will let you continue your game at the beginning of the world that you died on. There are three points in the game called Warp Zones, where you can skip ahead to the later levels. The first one is at the end of World 1-2. This Warp Zone will take you to Worlds 2, 3, or 4. The second Warp Zone is at the middle of World 4-2, where you've got to hit this secret vine and climb up it to access Worlds 6, 7, and 8. The final Warp Zone is again at World 4-2. And this one can be accessed by staying up top of the stage and running past the exit pipe. This one will take you to World 5. Did you know it's possible to get fireballs while you're small? Get to the end of any Bowser dungeon and sneak past Bowser. You need to time this out so that you hit both Bowser as well as the axe simultaneously. This will cause you to get hurt and beat the stage at the same time. Now in the next stage, even though you're big, the next power-up will be a mushroom, which will make you small when you grab it. Then, after you grab a fire flower, you'll still be small, but you'll be able to shoot fireballs. It's crazy. At the end of World 3-1, you'll come across these stairs with Koopa Troopas walking down them. Jump on the topmost Koopa, and by bouncing his shell against the stairs, you're able to jump on it over and over again and rack up a serious amount of extra lives. Fireworks are triggered by the time left when you beat a stage. More precisely, the final digit in the time counter. If it ends in 1, there'll be 1 firework, 3, there'll be 3 fireworks, and 6, there will be 6 fireworks. At the end of World 1-2, if you jump on the pipe that leads you back up to the overworld and break the bricks leaving one sticking out like this, you're able to jump backwards into the brick clipping into the wall. By going in the first pipe before the Welcome to Warp Zone text appears, you're able to access what is known as the Minus World. This is a water stage that when you get to the end, it loops over and over again forever. The Japanese version of Super Mario Bros. has a much more interesting Minus World, where here it will take you to a Fever Dream style stage where you're swimming through the sky with hot pink platforms and Princess Toadstool mirages. It actually continues with a Flying Fish stage and a remixed World 4-4 dungeon stage where there is no Bowser and no Princess. No one's here. After you beat it, it'll send you back to the title screen and you'll get the stage select unlock just like when you normally beat the game. The final secret in the original Super Mario Bros. is what I consider to be the most difficult. This is how to jump over the flagpole in World 1-1. About halfway through the stage, you'll come across a pit with two Goombas. You'll want to stay up top and gently rock the screen back and forth until you trigger the first Koopa Troopa to show up. Then, just as the Koopa Troopa falls into the pit, you want to jump into the sky, which will cause you to clip through the top of the screen and into the ground, just enough to stomp the turtle. It's crazy. If you did it correctly, the Koopa Troopa will get back up, and you'll see his little head poking out the bottom of the screen. Follow him through the stage, and at the end, right by the flagpole, time your jump so that you once again clip through the sky and jump off of him. This will cause you to bounce up and give you just the right amount of air to clear the flagpole. Now past the flagpole, there is nothing, with the stage looping over and over with nothingness until you run out of time. Now let's check out the secrets of Super Mario 2. In the first stage of the game, right off the bat, you'll run into a potion where you can score a mushroom and some coins for the slot machine at the end of the stage. Now instead of grabbing these coins, skip them for now and just grab the mushroom. 
Now later in the stage, you'll come across another area where you can throw a potion and grab another mushroom and a ton of coins. Normally, you're only able to collect coins twice in a stage, but since you didn't actually pull any out of the ground earlier, you're able to collect this massive stash two times. After you grab the coins, go in and out of the door that's right there to respawn the potion. Then collect them a second time. This will give you 14 chances to win 1-ups at the slot machine. It is a great way to start a game of Super Mario 2. Some areas can be completely skipped by high jumping off enemies like a tweeter or a ninji. You can skip nearly the entire level 1-2 by doing this trick. Throw a potion onto a vegetable and go into subspace. When you're coming back out, hit B immediately to grab the vegetable under the door. If you do it just right, the vegetable will get stuck to your head. It'll just sit there, and you can even pick up and throw other objects, and it won't affect it. It's not until you enter a door that you'll start holding it again. Another fun and pointless little trick is to try throwing a POW block when you're standing on a waterfall log. It'll make it fly into the air. Just like the other Mario games, Super Mario 2 features a few warps to help you jump around the game. The first is at World 1-3, where towards the end of the first part of the stage, there's a potion, which you need to carry a little ways to the vase on the right. Throw the potion down over here and head into the door, then hop into the vase to warp to World 4. The second warp is at World 3-1. Not far into the stage, you'll come across a giant waterfall that you normally climb up. Instead, drop down and fall all the way down to this little island and head into the door. In here, you'll find a lot of veggies to pull, and one of the last ones will be a potion. Grab it and then run a little to the right and you'll find a vase. Throw it down here and hop into the pipe to warp to World 5. The next warp is on World 4-2 in the area with the whales. About halfway through the stage, you'll come across a potion, which you need to grab and hold on to for a little bit. Now take this potion to the right, being careful not to get hit by the whale's water spouts. Eventually, you'll run into a little area with a vase. Throw the potion down here and hop into the vase to warp to World 6. The final warp is at World 5-3. At the beginning of the stage, you'll climb up a ladder and up top, you'll see a vase. The potion you'll need to activate the warp is right there on the ground. Now if you're playing as Luigi, it's pretty easy to grab the potion and high jump up there. But the other characters won't be able to jump that high. You can try to ride an Albatross up there, but what I found the easiest to do is to grab the potion and charge jump off of a bomb to get that little extra height you need to get up there. This warp will send you to the final World 7. The final secret for Super Mario 2 is the infamous Cheat Code of Death. At any time during the game, press the Start button to pause the game. Now on the second controller, hit Up, B, and A. Then on pause the game on controller 1, you will instantly die. Not much is known as to why this one exists, but it was always a good time doing this one to your little brother. Mom! Super Mario 3 was full of secrets, and these are the ones you need to know. In World 1-2, there's a pipe propped up on another pipe where Goombas will spill out of. Get to this area with the raccoon suit and let a couple of Goombas come out on screen. Then jump and bounce off of one of them and at the height of your jump, slowly float down using the tail. Now if you do this correctly, more Goombas should come out of the pipe and you can keep on bouncing on them and rack up the extra lives. Every once in a while, you want to jump on the Paragoomba to take away his wings. When he gets off screen, he'll come back again with the wings, so there should always be enough Goombas to keep yourself in the air. There's a similar trick you can do in the first fortress in World 2. There's an area with three dry bones, and you can use them in the same way. Pick them off one at a time to keep yourself in the air long enough to get as many extra lives as you want. Oh yeah! Super Mario 3 has three warp whistles that'll let you access any world in the game. The first whistle is at World 1-3. At the end of the stage, you'll come across a white block. If you duck on this block for a few seconds, you'll fall down into the background. Now quickly run all the way to the right and you'll hit a secret toad house where you can pick up the first warp whistle. The second whistle is hidden in the first fortress of the game. You'll need the raccoon suit to access this one. Make your way through the first area, but at the end, fly up top off screen and head all the way to the right. There is a hidden door up here that will take you to a secret room where you can collect the second whistle. The third whistle is at the end of the second world. You'll find two Hammer Brothers on the map, and one of them will give you a Hammer power-up. 
You want to use the hammer at the very top right corner of the map to destroy the boulder and access a hidden section of the map. Here you'll find another hammer brother, but this time you're up against two fire brothers. Beat them both for the third and final whistle. The first two whistles are all you need to get to the final world. If you use a whistle while already in the stage select screen, you'll warp directly to world 8. If you stop and let a chain chomp tug on his chain long enough, after roughly a minute and a half, they will break free. Now be careful, because they will lunge at you before running away. I was curious to see where they went, so I followed him. Where you going, guy? I'm following you home. They just keep going until they hit off screen. Every world in the game has a stage where if you collect a certain amount of coins in the level, after you beat it, it will spawn a white mushroom house. Inside the mushroom house, you'll find either a P-Wing or an Anchor. These are the stages and how many coins you'll need to find. After you beat the game, if you start a new game and open your inventory, you'll find it filled with P-Wings. 28 of them, in fact. In World 8, the second stage you'll take on are Bowser's ships. These ships can be very challenging, but a secret to this stage is that you can swim underneath them. It takes some practice to make sure you're actually underneath them. You'll get crushed if you don't do it right. But once you swim under them, keep hitting A until you surface. There are three ships here total, the last two of which you can swim under. A very rare secret in this game are the white coin ships. To access these, five conditions must be met when you finish a stage. The first, you have to be on either world 1, 3, 5, or 6. The second, there must be a hammer brother on the map. The third condition is that you have to finish the level with an even number on the clock. The fourth condition is that your coins must be at a multiple of 11 when you finish the stage. This means 11, 22, 33, and so on. The fifth and final condition is that the tens digit in your score must match the multiple of 11 that your coins are at. For instance, my coins here were at 11, so my tens digit had to be a 1. If I had gotten 22 coins, it would need to be a 2. 33 coins, a 3, and so on. This ship is filled with a ton of coins and is such a fun secret. When you're taking on the final battle with Koopa, there is a secret to access an easier battle. First, you need to make it to Koopa's castle with a P-Wing. Be very careful not to lose the P-Wing power and make your way through the castle. When you get to the hot lava part, take the path that is second to the bottom, the one with the Roto Discs and Thwomp. Make your way all the way through this path until you get to Koopa. And once you're there, immediately fly up and to the left. You'll reach another Koopa room where you need to fall down and land on this ledge. Then fly back up and to the right, back to the original battle with Koopa. Now you'll notice that Koopa will no longer shoot fire. He still makes the sound and pretends like he's going to shoot it, but nothing comes out. The last secret is another Koopa trick. When you're in the final battle, if you duck while Koopa is ground pounding, you won't take any damage. You'll have to keep crouching until he jumps up again to get out of there, but it can come in handy if you just can't get out the way. In fact, Koopa's entire lower half will not hurt you. If you're small, Mario, you can just straight up run into him and hide from his fire in his arms. Hold me, Koopa baby. Well, that was what I considered to be the must-know tricks of Super Mario on NES. Did I miss any notable ones? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it to let me know. It really helps out my channel if you do that. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more retro videos like this. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Goodbye.